Good morning. It's about 10 o'clock. Friday, mid-April, in the Pacific Northwest city of Vancouver, British Columbia. I just went for a drive this morning to take in the um, springtime in Vancouver. As I had mentioned before, we just have a spectacular spring here. Now I'm looking west right now. I'm on the western uh, portion. Oh, just a sec, my dog's eating something down there. Hey, hey, out of there. No. Sorry about that. I'm looking west. We're on the western tip uh, out near the, the University of British Columbia in Vancouver. And that little strip right there is a beach called Iona Beach. And it is a regional park. Um, that's the airport I'm looking at right now. The planes fly right in there. So if you're ever flying into Vancouver and you get a clear day and you get to look around, it's really beautiful. Um, I get a lot of my materials on that beach right there. I go for these beautiful walks and you can walk right out to that tip right there. There's a little separation I think you can see. And uh, unless you want to get wet and swim, but you can stop right there. But it's a nice, beautiful walk. It's one of my, it's probably my favorite um, area in the whole uh, city. Still on my morning drive. I made it back to the east side of Vancouver. Um, and I just drove by this uh, this magnolia tree that is just an absolute full bloom. It's near the end, petals are falling. But I don't think, you know, before I came to Vancouver, I don't really remember recognizing magnolia trees, but now, oh my God, they're just spectacular. dropped a book off at the library and uh, there's a shot of the downtown looking west from East Van. And you can hear some kids in the background. There's a school here. here. And the mountains. You know, so these kids, you know, playing on a playground. Beautiful mountains in the background. Really nice park area. And um, a shot of the downtown. Beautiful Vancouver. Guys, I still haven't made it to my studio. I'm still walking the dog, doing some errands. There goes my man Jay. A very special man indeed. Um, so Sam is working on this house project with us and he is the young guy that's helping me with some techno technology uh, stuff on YouTube. And um, Stan Sam is studying computer science and we really enjoy having him on the project when he has time. And having his lunch up on a scaffold, folks. It's just a beautiful day to do so. I agree. Sam has uh, been, he, I think of my seven videos, he's one of the four comments. Thanks, Sam. No problem at all. Oh, Chachi's having another nap. Don't worry, Chach. I'm going out to do some work. We'll be back to go for another walk tonight. Or in a few hours. Another beautiful day. I don't know, I did a little cleaning this morning before I went for my drive. It always feels so good, doesn't it? To get some cleaning done. I was already into the studio. The door's open. I, uh... Went down and just picked up a uh, cup of coffee. And uh, I'm looking forward to just drinking that as I get my mind set into the day of work.
Yeah. Just that line. The scientific nature of the ordinary man is to go on out and live the best you can. Good old John Prine. Yeah, he's an artist. He's a singer-songwriter that, uh, my goodness, I really love um, his writing, just the whole thing about him. I remember uh, getting introduced to John Prine when I was teaching English in Korea. A friend of mine was playing a lot of guitar at that time, and he was really into him. And to be honest with you, I wasn't really um, paying attention to my friend, but it introduced me. And then it was years later, I was at a party out in the woods in a cabin. And then uh, the song came on. It was uh, from the uh, Bruised Orange album. And um, I remember immediately saying, who is this? And I want more. And then the guy told me it was uh, John Prine. So, yeah, John Prine passed away, uh, COVID. Um, I think during the first year of COVID, he, he, he was dealing with throat cancer before and he had a surgery and uh, he was a smoker. You know, I think two of his albums, if not more, at least two, you know, he's on the cover smoking a cigarette, so. <laughs> but uh, yeah, John Prine, what a writer. And then the line that follows that is, I don't think, I don't think that you know that I think you don't know. And I remember when I first heard that song, I had to keep on going back and trying to figure that out. I don't think that you know that I think you don't know. And uh, it comes off an album that, it's not my favorite Prine album, but it's good. It has some, uh, some, some great tunes in it for sure. And the thing also about John Prine, like what I've noticed is the artists that I tend to love, everybody that I love is a John Prine fan. And that's like Dylan, Neil Young, uh, Tom Petty, Lucinda Williams, Nora Jones, this young girl, I, uh, Casey Musgraves. I'm not saying I love Casey Musgraves, but a young artist, and I find her a very good songwriter. She's she's out of Texas, kind of has a country vibe to her. She's mostly influenced by John Prine. Um, it's, uh, you know, a lot of us are tending to look for all these quick fixes in life and how to get healthy and, and you know, how to do all these, you know, you know, whatever, feel good. Well, John Prine's, a, he's an artist that can help you live, um, teach you to live. His writing is just very simple, but very deep at the same time. And it's just kind of for the every person. And um, yeah, Prine, P-R-I-N-E. Give it a go, folks. So I'm just uh, setting up a little jig here. This old pot I found basically fits this ball, so that way I can just hold it as I'm sanding it, and it just sits in there. So that's all. I'm just going to do some sanding today and um, finish me coffee and uh, hopefully make some headway. We'll see what happens. Yeah, the, the another line in that John Prine song is, um, how does that go now? It goes, the fundamental story, the fundamental nature, the, the fundamental story, Ordinary, the fundamental story of the, the fundamental story of the contemporary man is to walk away and someday understand. And I find that's a bit of wisdom too. It sounds very simple, but you know, the older we get, 
we kind of realize <laughs> that's what has to be done. sandpaper on a stick stapled around go through some I do lots of kind of holes like this so you just saw a video of Sam the Young student that's helping me with some technology stuff, website, YouTube, I don't have a clue. So I just, I had to phone him up last night actually, or text him last night. And he's so smart, he's so sharp, and he helps us on our job site once in a while. He's been working for Jay for a few summers and uh, he's just a great, uh, he's, so, he's just sharp. I don't know what else to say. Pleasant, funny, and um, after I turn the camera off, he said that he just picked up uh, the book that I had recommended to him called uh, Shop Class as Soul Craft, written by uh, Matthew Crawford. And Matthew Crawford, um, you know, he was a philosophy, PhD in philosophy or something. And uh, during the summers, uh, when he was doing his university, he used to work in a mechanic shop. So we learned the the uh, skills of uh, working as a mechanic and worked his way up and and um, the book kind of talks about um, you know working with your hands and the different uh, sort of mental capacity that it takes and what kind of uh, smarts and and how to figure things out and you know physical realities and stuff like that it really influenced me it was a really excellent um, read and I think about it all the time of uh, a lot of the work that we're doing and a lot of people seem like they're, um, you know, always looking for uh, something in their lives and they're, they're looking for, um, you know, some sort of magic potion. But, you know, getting out in the backyard and digging a hole and 
you know, planting a tree or putting a post in or something like that. Like to me, that's just when you're doing something like that, using your hands and having to think ahead and stuff, it's healthy uh, unto itself. So the book is really good. Shop class as soul craft. That book got recommended to me uh, via Brett Weinstein and Heather Hying. Actually, she's the one that recommended it. She's she's doing most of the reading on their, uh, uh, you know, they do their podcasts together, the Dark Horse podcast, which I really enjoy. Like, you know, they have been um, uh, standing up strong over the past few years and keeping to their integrity, keeping with the scientific process, trying to educate uh, you know, they were educators. They, they, they prepared uh, first year students for 15 or 14 years. They were the most popular professors at their school. So I don't know how many of you guys know their story, but to me it was really disturbing to watch it. And um, they have been uh, such excellent teachers and professors to me over the past uh, three years on their podcast, The Dare Course. And the books that they have that sh they have recommended, I have gone through a lot of them, and they're always on cue. And shop class at Soulcraft is one of them. So let's see how she fits, folks. quite honest with you I miscalculated I wanted the ball initially to be on the ground to me that's too far forward and it doesn't work so last night I actually discovered that I didn't have it on film um, but it got me into my creative mind thinking about it and I have a plan that I think is actually gonna look better and be more functional on the trophy as a whole okay that's good. We are moving along. gonna get set up for sanding here folks and um, you know visualize me sanding it for like 25 minutes half an hour or something like that <laughs> I'm not gonna film it such a beautiful day here Shabby. That's uh, I just ran through with the 100 grit and kind of hope for a cloud cover today. That way you can see better. You're not in the shade. Like if you're in the sun and you're in the shade, you kind of can't see your lines. But with cloud, it's the best uh, lighting. Same with for videoing and stuff like that. And I know I told you guys I try to sand during rainy days, and today is another sunny day, and I'm outside sanding, disturbing neighbors. But um, it's still chilly enough where people are not like kind of sitting out in their backyard so much and their windows aren't open and stuff like that. So I think I can get away with it. Plus it's not a crazy amount of time. Just get off the old horn with my folks before I came out here. And if nothing else transpires from these YouTube videos, which I'm kind of enjoying the process of just, you know, doing it. But my, uh, my parents are enjoying it. <laughs> gonna have to, uh, I gotta do a few more, uh, 
touch-ups on this one. Is to walk away someday. How's it going? That's nice. It's going to be a big baseball glove. Like the hand print of it. With a the ball there and stuff. I'm going to grind it all out, right? Yeah, I'm gonna. I just, I'm still shaving away and stuff like that. How are you doing these days? I'm good. Yeah, kids. kids from school. Kids from school. Yeah. You're doing it. Bring it back. Okay. You're doing it. You're doing good. Definitely. They always seem to be so happy. Crazy kids. They're happy yeah. though. Hey. Okay. Now the weather is good. Now they're gonna want to be outside all day. And as you should be too, right? We gotta be. Later. Later. <laughs> from the classic album. Oh my God, what year was that? 69 maybe? It's the band's uh, second uh, studio album. Just a sec, I gotta fix this camera, folks. What kind of a Mickey Mouse operation are we running here? Okay. Let's say that might be a little bit better. Something like that, yeah. How does it get better than the band back in the day? Well, I'll tell you how. When they were playing with Bob Dylan. <laughs> um, I did a little bit of a sand the other day. I cut, I, I kind of carved these out with the Sawzall. And then I just went and uh, started shaping it with the sander just seconds ago. You guys saw the beginning of that. Now I'm just going around with some chisel work here. And, uh... You know, cleaning up some some holes. Start with the big chisel, move to my smaller ones, and then you know, sanding and cracks and stuff like that. That's always the um, very time-consuming stuff. Part of my process. I'm I'm still learning so many techniques. Like you know, I I, I don't pretend to be any amazing woodworker or anything like that like for me it's kind of the sculpture the shape first and then I'll figure out how to make that come and I just kind of learn little tips along the way I'm always asking friends and I always um, I'm on YouTube trying to figure things out and learn some better uh, skill sets speaking about my nephews on my older sister's side that live near Portland, Maine the other day. Well, my younger sister, Vicki, her two kids are so, uh, so awesome. They live in New Brunswick, Luke and Abby. And, um, Abby was just here last, uh, summer, in the summertime my mama and it was very good in many ways and it was a bit tragic in other ways like I uh, I freaking got COVID Lemieux and I my wife and I we, we got COVID a few days into it and um, that was a pretty disappointing thing 
And, you know, for a day or two, I was denying it. Like, I just felt sick. I didn't realize I, you know, I didn't really think it was COVID. So Abby and I, and she's probably going to get mad at me for telling this story, but I'm just going to go about it anyway. Um, Abby, who is a very talented athlete in her high school and club teams back in Miramichi, New Brunswick, my hometown, um, you know, uh, her and I went over to the mountain, Grouse Mountain, and did the uh, well-known Vancouver hike, the Grouse Grind. And um, me, at 45 years old, or 46 at the time, 45, and full of COVID, a bad knee, you know, 15 pounds over my fighting weight, I just smoked that young athlete up the hill. <laughs> but um, no, all jokes aside, Abby is such a sweetheart. Um, she's very uh, mature for her age. She, um, you know, she's a really excellent young, young, uh, young woman. It's gonna be interesting to see what kind of. Uh, what interests and where um, the future takes her and what kind of a career she's gonna choose for herself. She's a really good basketball player and a good soccer player and I think she was playing some volleyball but um, I don't know if that's still a thing. And then Luke, Luke is a, uh, Luke's an artist. So him and I, we uh, connect on that front. And um, Luke draws, he plays music, um, and he's just an all around pretty cool dude. But he's also just finishing, like Campbell, his high school hockey career. And Luke's a big uh, defenseman, and uh, a very good one at that, from what, from what I hear. I haven't been able to watch them, watch them play, but um, you know. Luke is, uh, he was rushing the puck, scoring some goals, and on the, uh, he was like one of the better defensemen on his team this year, they were, so he had a lot of ice time and all that, but Luke will be graduating high school soon, and is planning to go to Mount Allison University in Sackville, New Brunswick, where he will be doing an education degree with maybe thoughts of of going into art education. So uh, Luke's cool, man. He's listening to some music. We're talking Nirvana. He was asking me about Nirvana there a few weeks ago, and you know that happened when I was in high school. Um, I always kind of preferred Nirvana over Pearl Jam. My buddy Kevy was a big Pearl Jam fan. But you know, when somebody asked me who are you, who do you prefer, Pearl Jam or Nirvana? Well, my answer to that at the time would have been Tom Petty. <laughs> That's who I was preferring when I was in high school. Old Tom, man, he just always was Tom Petty. There was no, he just, he just kept evolving and all through time. But, and then Luke, you know, he, he, under, he gets Seinfeld and The Simpsons and all that stuff. So he's kind of, uh, we have some similarities in there with um, what we're interested in. But uh, all in all, my sisters have done very good with their children. Of course, their husbands deserve a lot of credit. Yeah! Okay, she's coming. Yeah, the band and Bob Dylan, they are very connected, actually. Anybody that's into that kind of scene knows very well that they went on tour in 65 or 6, and um, the famous tour where 
Bob went electric and got food and basically just kept going and really didn't care what uh, people were doing. He just kept doing his thing. And then they were hanging out up in upstate New York, Woodstock, or whatever, and they have some really cool uh, things happening there. So, what am I going to do here? A little webbing. I just drew in some webbing. I will give myself a hole to start with and just try to cut it out and see what happens. <laughs> Milwaukee thing. Just our local place, Summit Tools. The deals are good. Um, you know. I did not tell my wife I was spending that money though. So that could be, uh, had to be done, but I'm just kidding. She is always Telling me to get some good tools. Now, let's see how this works. school for the weekend. Portable vice, just a little bit lower, a little bit more versatile. I just connected it to that um, uh, piece of wood a couple of years ago, and I just use it out here if I have to sand something. Moving 
over to this tool here. Um, am I plugged in? So handy. Uh, nobody ever knows what to call it, so a shout out to Rod Vaughn out in Tawasson, one of the mentoring carpenters that I uh, jump in with from time to time. He and his crew call it the Nibbler. <laughs> so I brought it to uh, East Van and now Jay's crew calls it the Nibbler. Everybody seems to like that name. I'm just going to go through these webbing holes and make this a little bit more uh, uh, beautiful. This gets all sanded beautifully. I got some details that I'm thinking about all the time. How this is all gonna take place. I'm a little off the mark there. Ooh. Okay. Well, I gotta come back and uh, fix up some stuff, but I think I'm gonna take my little cha-cha for a walk to the park. It's such a beautiful uh, day and get her running around chasing a ball talking to some people taking in the beautiful spring day in Vancouver come back out for a few hours a couple hours this evening might have to split this day up into two videos for time. I don't know how to do the technology like I am like doing everything off of my phone. My computer is so old that I tried to download uh, 
iMovie onto it and it wouldn't even take it. So I'm doing everything off a telephone. <laughs> so baby steps, baby steps.